Guys, one of the players that was mentioned in this report, uh, you know, pretty big role in this report was Paul Leduca, now the X-Men. And it's interesting. As we take a look at, at something that was obtained on letterhead from the Dodgers, which I thought was fascinating, Jim, and I want to get yeah. your take on this, and, and what their discussions were about Leduca. Quote, this is from uh, Dodgers officials, quote, steroids aren't being used anymore on him. Big part of this might have some value to trade. Florida might have interest. Got off the steroids. Took away a lot of hard line drives. Can get comparable value back. Consider trading. If you do trade him, we'll get back on the stuff and try to show you he can have a good year. That's his makeup. Comes to play last year of contract playing for 05, end quote. That, to me, is a fascinating, fascinating statement. You, of course, are a general manager. You've been in the front office. Do front office folk know a lot more about guys that are on, uh, on, on these substances that maybe the people will allude to? Well, this isn't confidential information. It should be, but it's not. And really what happens is it gets passed around in the scouting circles. And you end up, I, you know, I remember many, many times over the past few years where we talked to scouts. And we're trying to decide if we're going to trade for a guy like Paul Duca or maybe sign a, a major free agent. And we're asking the scouts, to your best estimate, what is your feeling? Has he, has he gained velocity in his fastball if you're a pitcher? Has he gained four or five miles an hour in his fastball? Has he, has he increased his jersey size? You know, one or two sizes in the past year from year to year? Has he put on an abnormal amount of weight? Have you seen an aberration in terms of his statistics from year to year? Those are some of the things that we talked about within the front office, and we would put the scouts on the line, just like you saw in the scouting report, and, and give us your best estimate, what you think. And then we would take that information and, and use it accordingly. Sometimes we'd back away from guys. You know, to, to hear some of the guys say they didn't know about Miguel Tejada's use, I mean, that was, that was prevalent throughout baseball. Yeah, I mean, people knew that. Many, many people knew about that throughout the game. So it's valuable information. Well, you know, we asked this question last year when the Mets re-signed Guillermo Mota. We asked it multiple times. What exactly were teams' policies as far as guys who were on steroids, guys coming off steroids? And it seems as though, and maybe, Jim, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that it was more important to a team to know whether they were getting a guy who was going to play at the top of his game, whether it was on or off steroids, than whether they were using or not. There's no question. I will say, one, with one exception, when I went to the Orioles from the Mets, I, I got down there just after the 2005 season. There's all this information out there. Rafael Palmeiro had been accused and, and actually admitted to using it. Mm -hmm. So we, Mike Flanagan and I, took a concerted effort. We made sure that we were not going to sign any players that we felt was associated with steroids. We took a more proactive role than most people in the game. I think the majority of people took the, the role that Gary was saying. But I think we took, because, because it was a focus with the Orioles, we decided we wanted to distance ourselves as much as we could. Yeah, I think, and I think also you, you look specifically at Paul LaDuca and look at his career. His second year, he had 25 home runs as a member of the Dodgers. Never approached that number again. And I will say this, though, from people that I've talked to, you know, a lot of people ask me, hey, maybe the Mets didn't sign LaDuca because of this. This had nothing to do why Paul LaDuca isn't back in, in Flushing. That's, that's one thing for sure. Interesting.